Hello there, ladies and gents. How the devil are you? Welcome back once again to AMC's garage. Well, to the garden garage. Now, I don't think there are many who would disagree with me when I say that the Honda CB1000R is a good looking bike. As far as I'm concerned, there's something glaringly obvious missing from this machine, both from a styling standpoint and from a technical one. And it's down there at the front of the engine. It's down here by the front, by the pipes. As far as I'm concerned, it all just looks a bit open, a bit unfinished. All of the spray from the front wheel just gets smashed all over these pipes and it's a nightmare to keep them clean under. I've already punished them today, but they're always pitted, they're always corroded. And worst of all, the paintwork on the engine appears to be made of cheese and as such has been worn away by the rain already after just two years of having this bike. So I was of course overjoyed when I heard that SW Motec had done some of their trademark top quality protective work and created this, an aluminium belly pan for the Honda CB1000R. And of course I was even more overjoyed when they said they'd send me one to put on my bike. So that is a lovely bit of metal. Needs to get on my bike and start protecting the under jubblies of my CB1000R. In the box, the belly pan, front panel, nuts and bolts, and three mounting brackets. This is aluminium. These four bits look to me like they are powder coated steel. The first step, quick skim through the instructions, make sure I don't cock anything up. So we're gonna need some breadlock. And the first step involves bolting the front panel into the belly pan. I put a little bit of thread lock in each of these holes rather than in the bolt. Just a little dob in. Just gonna put that one on the floor for safekeeping for a second. Standard SW Motec quality that all the holes are beautifully countersunk. They have no bolts standing proud here, thanks very much. Firmly nipped will do it without kicking the arse out of it. The thread lock will do the rest. And so with them in and the front pedal fitted, it's onto the bike. And on both sides of the sump, I just need to remove these first two bolts. So I'm going to put that somewhere safe. We're not going to need that now, but might need it in the future if I want to take the belly pan off. And then the front one also somewhere safe because there's two new bolts in the SW Motec kit. Same over here on the other side. Oh, this is going to round. And apparently because these bolts are made of toffee, this one's rounded off. That's a brilliant start. And that one too, what are they made of? Cheese? Nothing I like more than using aggressive tools on a two-year-old bike. It looks like this is gonna have to be to be continued because I've tried everything I can. I had the mole grips on it, tried to get a pipe wrench in there, just minced it up, tried a 5 16th socket. It might be a bit smaller than an eight millimeter, but just round it off, and in doing so, I've scratched my sump up a bit, which is very irritating, but apparently Honda think it's okay to put bolts made of toffee onto their engines, so they've just rounded off straight away. So, to be continued, once I've got some proper tools that will enable me to get these off properly. See you in a second. Right then, fast forward to the next day. Welcome back. I spent the afternoon yesterday on the internet trying to find some nut extracting tools to try and remove these things. To no avail, the only things I could find were apparently made of the same metal as these bolts and were broken after one go. I then spent this morning charging around various hardware stores, also found nothing, but I did stumble upon a bit of an idea in that I've caused this problem because of the combination of the toffee soft bolts on this Honda CB1000R, well done Honda once again, and this horrible cheap nasty 8mm spanner. So I thought it was time to finally get myself something worth having and got myself a wearer joker spanner it cost me 850 well technically it cost my wife 850 because she treated me what a lovely wife she is i then instantly jumped out of the car came straight over here plugged this on to try and get it it was already a better fit but it still rounded it off so then what i did was i got aggressive on these little first of all i ran the engine warmed the bike up and then i bashed them with a hammer to get the edges all out of shape to squash the head of the bolt down on both of those then i took my shiny new spanner hammered that onto the horrible gnarly shaped nut 
or bolt, sorry, and lo and behold, it actually worked and they came off and another sign of a good quality tool, no damage whatsoever inside of the wearer spanner here. I think I'm actually gonna treat myself to a full set of these because I need them in my toolbox because I can't keep doing stuff like this with cheap, nasty crap tools. And obviously the other one too. So the engine's now cooled down a bit, get those out by hand. This is where I bring the deeply dexterous double nipple twizzle into play. We'll put there, nowhere safe, preferably in the bin because they're never gonna be used again. Look at the state of them. They're an absolute mess. Well done, Honda. Do something about the quality of your paintwork and your nuts and bolts because the train has definitely run off the track, ladies and gentlemen. Right there, with those bolts off, this should be pretty easy from here on out. So M6 Allen headed bolt, double up a thread lock, times two. Washer on each, probably could have put that on before I put the thread lock on, but never mind. Bracket piece up to the holes on the engine. Thankfully that now covers over all the bits where I've scratched the paint off the sump, but the sump was knackered anyway. Watch my video about my sump and paint woes with Honda to find out more about that. Second bolt at the back, leave them loose to begin with, I think. So that we've got a bit of play for mounting things up. And then it's up to the bottom radiator mount with my sexy new aero spanner. Yeah, that's more like it. That is exceptionally rusty though. Another thing that annoys me about motorbike manufacturers, they put the shortest mud guards in the world on just to preordain that your radiator, your exhaust pipe, the front of your engine are gonna get absolutely pebble dashed. Why can't they just make them long enough that it actually works and ugh, just, it gets on my nerves. All right, so that's that out. Theoretically somewhere safe, but I think I just chuck that in the bin and I'll replace it with something better if I ever need to in the future. And then, this long piece of bracketry comes into action, but not before. Put some thread lock on the bolt. Yeah, Put around the back like that. The bolt from the SW Motec kit then goes in there and takes the place of the toffee Honda one, which I shall ratchet into place with my also beloved Wera Toolcheck Plus Cyclops ratchet. I am turning into such a massive Wera fanboy. Vera, as they should be called, because it's a good, proud German company. Right, we'll leave that loose for positioning, because that then provides the foremost mounting point for the belly pan. So we come round to the other side, two bolts, two washers, dollop a thread lock. The powder coat steel bracket for this side, bolts into the holes that we freed up yesterday. Just finger tight, because now we can, because now we can off, because now we can present the bug spoiler up to the bike. So that's how it's gonna be. Not liking the look of that already. But first, you guessed it, five little bolts need five little dollops of thread lock. So then we have got one bolt down at the bottom, two over here on the left. Oh, come on. And now it's starting to rain. Brilliant. Right, now time for the rush job. A little bit of pressure needed to get that last one in line. Hence the need not to tighten up all the nuts before everything is seated. That needs princely sum of five newton meters of torque with my miniature torque wrench. And that's five there. But of course we're not finished yet because the brackets themselves are still loose and they need 10 newton meters of torque. That is not easy. So get an extension in there before I scratch everything to pieces. That's 10. This does make it a little bit awkward that can't tighten that before you've screwed everything on here. So I think for that one, I'm gonna have to go for the guesstimation torque wrench and use a tool that I can actually get in there. Oh, just gonna round that. Click, click, yep. That feels about tight enough. Round to the other side. Obviously, the torque wrench doesn't fit into that gap. So I'll go for a variation on the guesstimation torque wrench. Click, click. Hard to believe that's tight enough after how much effort it took to get it off, but, and then, keyhole surgery for the last one. Click, click, that'll do there. Round over the front for the final bolt, also with 10 newton meters of torque. There we go. And that's the job done. Look at that. Belly pan fitted to the Honda CB1000R. Looking very tasty if I do say so myself and matching up wonderfully with all of these aluminium panels. There we go, job is a good one. The belly pan is fitted to the Honda CB1000R. A little bit stressful at the beginning there, but we got there in the end. So a huge thanks to SW Motor for giving me that bit to chuck onto my bike. I think it looks proper good. You guys have done a great job with that. Shame on you, Honda, for the toffee bolts, but 
ultimately, the job is a good one. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it interesting, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Either way, leave me a comment below. Tell me what you did and didn't like. Hopefully you didn't like the drama, but I'm sure you might have enjoyed it a little bit. You say this to you. Anyway, I've been Andy. This has been fitting the bug spoiler from SW Motec to the CB1000R. I'm going to get inside before it starts to properly bucket it down with rain. See you next time. Throw up.